says, Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. I never know. 
So here I am to worship. Now my friends be me, Lord. Here I am to bow. Not my neighbor be me, Lord. Here I am to say. Not my father, not my mother. You're my God. You're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful. I know it was the blood. 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 I know it was
this morning. Thank God for everybody being here this morning. I'm here to introduce a speaker. We all know him as our shepherd of the house, know him as our pastor, good teacher, good husband, good everything. <laughs> He's a good father to some of us and to all of us in the house. <laughs> and we thank God for him. I'm not going to prolong the service. I've come, we all, I know that we all come here to hear a word today from God. So I know that God has given him a word for us today, something that will take us through the week, and something for us to meditate on and to feed us spiritually. So we all need it today. Let us all stand right now as I introduce our pastor. And I now introduce to some and to others and to our youth stream. Watchers, no other than our own Pastor Samuel D. Boone. Thank you, All right. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What Almighty God we serve. Is now what Almighty God we serve. What Almighty God we serve. Yeah, angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What Almighty God we serve. I said, Jesus is the God we serve. Jesus is the God we serve. Let's now aim to find it for him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we 
into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. The like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lives, he lives unto God. Let the church say amen. Let's stand for a moment of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for this moment and for this hour, Lord, we use this instrument in your hand and unto your word and unto your praise. Lord, open unto us the words of wisdom, not and understanding. Let your word go forth. Let it edify. Let it build up. Let it heal. Let it convict, Father. We pray and we ask this all in Jesus' name. And we thank you for what we're going to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Today we're talking about the believer is to know his position in Christ. We knowing things sometimes people say is not good for you. They say sometimes it's better not to know. Some of that to a certain percentage point is true. Some things you don't want to know about. But then some things you need to know about. Because if you know you can live a better life. Because of a lot of things that God's people sometimes are not assured of or not know about, the devil win a lot of victories over us. Because we lack that ability to know that all power, greater is he. he. We can do all things through eyes. That's all these things. If you know it, when the devil comes with his temptations and his tests, you know that all the time you got the victory. He can't win unless you allow him to win. 
isn't that something if you ever consider that he can't win unless you allow him to win people today would think that it's almost impossible to live a life in holiness in righteousness in sanctification doing the things that are pleasing in God's sight they feel like that's an impossibility to do because so many people claim to know God and some people claim to be a Christian to be born again and they're living lives sometimes worse than the people who don't know God and never claim to read the Bible never claim to go to church and yet they sometimes are living better lives than those who are supposed to be born again Christians but Paul tells us in the book of Romans how we can defeat sin. How we can overcome the temptation of sin. If he starts off and he lets us know he said, we sh he said what shall we say then? He says shall we continue in sin that grace may abound. You know when God saved us when we put our faith in Jesus Christ when we say we believe in the death, the burial the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Bible says at that moment in time, God justified us, in other words he freed us and cleansed us from all of our sins and right now, at that moment in time, the moment we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior God washes our sins away and he looks upon us as if we had never sinned in our life, people say that's hard to believe. Yo, God can do it. If you believe, if you have faith, God can do it. I don't care how terrible person you were, how wicked you was, when you turn your heart and mind over to the Lord Jesus Christ, God changes you from the old into a brand new creature. You see, and the thing about it is that that righteousness that God declares you to be, that righteousness is what God is counting on you to use to walk this holy life. That righteousness is what's going to cause you to put away some things and to put on some things. Because without that righteousness that God gives us, that righteousness which is His righteousness, He places it upon us, He credited it to us, that righteousness causes us to walk away from sin and walk towards holiness. You see, but the devil don't want you to know that. The devil don't want you to believe that, that God has placed something in you that will cause you to walk away from the old things, or the old things that you used to like, and begin to love the things that you used to hate. The things that you would never do. You would never pray. You would never fast. You would never come to church. You would never sing a song for the Lord. But the, the, the desire that God places in you when he declares you righteous, he takes away those old desires, and he put a new desire in your heart. I thank God for that new desire that he placed in my heart. I thank God for the new life that he's given me. The life that looks towards him and not towards me. Because if I'm looking towards me, I'm going to fail every time. But God gives me a righteousness. I'm not Nothing to be ashamed of. But something to adore. Something to be proud of. I'm glad I'm saved, y'all. I don't know about y'all. But I'm glad I'm saved. So much, you know, people say you're missing when you get saved. I ain't missing nothing. <laughs> they are missing a whole lot. <laughs> and, and this, this is the worst hell I'm going to be in is living down here. Huh? This is the closest I'm going to get to hell. Because once I believed in Christ, brother, God takes me out of darkness. And he put me into this marvelous light. I see it as it really is. Huh? Oh, yeah, I see life as it really is. Huh? I see things as they really are. I'm not fooled by the things that the devil uses as a tool to try to keep you out there and how to keep you from living the life that God has given you. Because he said, I'm going to tell you something. God has given us power. He said, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. Power. This power is not no weakling power. You can't cut it off and cut it off. It's there. And it's always there. And sometimes we forget how much power we got. And you see, the devil don't want you to know that either, but you got greater is he in you than he that's in the world. And see, the thing is, this is people think that because you say you're saved by grace, and it's not of yourself, but the Bible says it's a gift of God. He didn't need you to jump over 15 pews. 
He didn't need you to give a certain amount of money. He didn't need you to do some some spectacular work or some spectacular miracle. All he asked for you to do is to accept his gift of grace. He's done all the work. He's paid all the costs. He's done everything that you couldn't do for yourself. He's done it for you. But all he asked for you to do is just to believe and accept what he's done for you. Isn't that something? Really, believe it or not, when a person gives you a gift, that's something that he has done for you. And all he's asking you to do is to sell my gift. He ain't asking you to give him any money. He ain't asking you to pay him no taxes. All he asks for you to do is just accept my gift. And some people questioning that. How easy can it get? Huh? We try to put uh, you know, uh, additions to it. We try to tag things onto it. Oh, no, you got to pray 15 days. Oh, no, you got to fast 15 hours. Oh, yeah. No, God say just accept it. Some people say before they come to Christ, they say, I got to quit lying. I got to quit. You ain't going to quit. Hope oh, that you're going to quit is seeking God. But the thing is, He wants you to come to Him as you are. He knows you can't do it on your own. And see, the thing is, when, when you tell people that all you got to do is just believe and just accept Him, come to, come to Him as you are. God knows what you are. Did you ever think He didn't know? He knew you before you knew yourself. And all he asks him that you just come as you are. I can do something with you. <laughs> he said, throw your sins, be a scholar. He said, I can make them quieter than this. I can do something with you. Huh? And then the best thing about grace is this here. God can take something that's worth nothing and make it invaluable. I mean, you can't put a price tag to it. When it wasn't nothing before it came to God. You know something? Today, because you know Christ, you are somebody. Huh? You might have thought you were somebody before you came to Christ, but now that you know Christ, now that Christ is in your life, now that Christ did all these things for you, now you are somebody. And I thank God. I don't, I don't, I'm not ashamed of salvation. I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. I'm not ashamed of being born again. People, people, you know, they want to put you in a corner, want to make you feel bad because you ain't like them. I'm glad I'm not like you. I'm glad I'm not like a dog, I'm not like a pig. Huh? I'm glad I'm not like a buzzard. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not like a fish. I'm glad I'm not a catfish. Huh? Huh? I'm glad I'm not none of those things. Huh? Don't want to be none of those things. But I want to be what God made me to be. He made me to be just like Jesus. That's what he made you to be. And Jesus is somebody you want to be just like, huh? You don't want to be like these other folks. And see, the thing is, that for people, Paul say, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? People think that because you tell people how easy it is to be saved, that people are easily going to sin. And that's the exact opposite of why God saved you. The first thing you got to realize that you came to God to turn away from your sins. You didn't come to God so you could sin more. You don't need God for that. What stupid do you think that way? Huh? Why would I come to God to sin more? Huh? But you come to God so you want to turn away from your sins. And see, the thing is this here. Paul says, shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue to practice? Shall we continue to live in sin? He said, God forbid. How, how, how can you even have that come up in your mind as a newborn child of God? How could that thought even come up in your mind? Do you ever think that, that, that in your life there was things that you just despised? That things that, that, that you would never do? And, and even if it came across your mind, you say, no, there is no way. Some of you are sit up here as men. You know you ain't going to go to bed with no man. That's despicable. You will say to yourself, Ain't no way that thought gonna come across my mind. I'll slap my own self in the head and say something wrong with you, mind, for letting a thought like that come across my mind. And the Paul is saying the same way it is about a child of God thinking about doing some sin. What am I gonna do with sin? Shall I continue in sin that grace may abound? See, the thing is with the people's misinterpret is this. See, I don't care how bad your sin are. What you've done, grace is greater. There ain't a sin that you can commit that God can't forgive you for. 
See, I'm saying, well, Paul was one of the worst, and God saved him. And what he's trying to show is that and as great as some of the sins of some of the peoples, God's grace overcame it. You would have never thought somebody was hooked on drugs or somebody was hooked by damn prostitution could ever get over that. But grace brought them over it. Huh? You would have never thought somebody who's lying or somebody who's doing all those wrong things would ever get over that. But grace overcame it. That's what he's trying to say. The grace is greater than whatever sin that out there that man say that's got you. Somebody say, what's all crap? You can't go back. I'm here to tell you, what's all grace? You can't go back. What's grace getting into your life? And what's grace wash you up? You ain't going back out there. It's greater. Greater than some of the things that people say can't be done. It's greater. You say, oh, well, can the Lord forgive me? It's greater. Well, sin about the Bible said Christ did much more about it. It wasn't on the same level. It wasn't even equal. Huh? It was more and abundantly more than whatever sin could do. Grace could undo it. Whatever sin thought that it had bound, grace could unbound it. Whatever sin thought that it had wrapped that tie up and taken up, grace got it loose. Why? Because grace is greater. And that's what we got in our life. We got grace. God's grace is upon us. We know a lot of things that God spared us from, God brought us through, God kept us. It was only because of it. We deserved it. You deserved to get whatever was going to come to you, but God said, no, I'm going to pardon them. I'm going to let them go. I'm going to let them go free. And some people think because God gives salvation for free, that now he's given permission for people to go out and sin more. But that's the exact opposite. Paul said, God forbid. And he gives us a reason why. He said, how shall we? We asked him, how can it be done? How shall we that are what? Dead to sin. Live any longer therein. It's, it, we want you to know something that's certain in your life as a Christian. Notice what he said, dead to sin. Some people don't know that. And he said, you are dead to sin. He said, how can you? Now, I, I'm here to tell you, every funeral home I went into and saw dead bodies, ain't none of them said, hi, Sam. None of them said, bye, Sam. None of them said, huh, Sam, I'm going to get you $5, take it over to my daughter. They hadn't interacted with me at all. You know why? They dead to the living. Just like the living is dead to the dead. I ain't got nothing to do with him. He ain't got nothing to do with me. And the fact of the matter is, he can't participate in my life, and I can't participate in his life. Why? Because he's dead. And a dead person, the definition of dead is no life, no movement, no activity. He's totally uh, disconnected to life itself. He's dead. Paul is saying to you, as a Christian, when it comes to sin, you are dead. You are totally disconnected. You are supposed to be not active, but inactive. You are supposed to be totally unplugged. You ain't supposed to have anything to do with sin. He said, how can you when you are dead? The devil try to give you a reason. He'll tell you, you got arms, use them. You got feet, use them. But the Bible says you have to yield them. He just can't take your arm and do what he want to do with it. He just can't take your eye and do what he want to do. You have to yield it to him. But when you know that it's up to me to give you permission to, for me to sin, then guess what? I'm not going to give you permission. This is simple as that. I, I, you, you can't make me sin. You can't make me do what's wrong. I have to give you permission. I'm not going to curse. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to get into a fight. I'm not going to do those things that God's not pleased with. I'm not going to give you permission. Do you know that? He has to have your permission. He makes it seem like you're going to die if you don't have it. Boy, you got to get that bull rise. Boy, that bull going to run out one day. No! You got to get that weed, boy. You know there ain't going to be no bull weed for so many years. No! 
You don't have to get none of those things. And go, guess what? You will live. He'll make it seem like you will die, but you will live. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how much your body tremble. You may even get somebody to call a monkey on your back. But God will get that monkey and tie him up and throw him away. You got to get the, you got to know these things. Look, I ain't got no control over you. Drugs ain't got no control over you. Women ain't got no control over you. Men ain't got no control. It's you. And when you learn that you are doing it yourself, God ain't giving it to you to do. The devil ain't making you do it. It's you. Things begin to change. I know God didn't give me that cuss word. I know the devil didn't tell me this lie. Huh? Y'all don't want to hear that, but that's truth. He can't use none of your parts of your body unless you yield it. Unto it, but see, thing is, Paul said you need to know, huh? He said, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer than he? That kills that thing about permission to do more, because it's so easy to get saved, because it's so easy for God to forgive you of your sin. Since it's so easy, it's so easy for you to go back out there into sin. It, it wasn't easy for God to forgive you for your sins. Oh, I hear people say that. It's so easy when you, when you just accept him as your Lord. And say, it wasn't easy. He took your place. Ain't no any and everybody going to take your place. But he took your place because he loved you. Now, you're going to reward him by going like that, doing the same thing that he took your place for? It's stupid for somebody to get out of the electric chair, be made free, and then go back and jump in the electric chair. That's crazy. You done been delivered from the electric chair. Why would you go back? I don't know nobody who, who's really been real sick and got over that sickness, want to call that sickness back to his body. I don't know nobody. When you get over that sickness, how you feel? Oh, thank God. <laughs> it's gone. You, you can't, you, you, you're glad for health. In fact, you start thanking God now more for health. Because why? You don't know how much health meant until that sickness was on your body. Until that doctor was telling you, we ain't got nothing we can help you with. And you bought the loot. You, when you get back on your feet, you are very thick. You ain't calling that back no more. You finished with that. And that's the way you should feel about sin. I'm finished with that. I ain't calling that life back no more. It didn't do me no good. So why would I go out there and sin some more? Because the thing is, it look like, it look like some people say because you get it so easy, you lose it just as easy. But you need to take that easy out. It wasn't easy for Jesus to die on that cross. It wasn't easy for him to shed his blood. It wasn't easy for God the Father to send God the Son down here to die for your sins. It wasn't easy. But people say, it's easy. You just accept him as the Lord and say, it's easy. You just say, no, that wasn't easy. I can't imagine somebody taking Sister Austin's life and say, I'm going to take it over. All that she done did, all the lies she done told, everything she done did, I'll, you just blame it on me and let her go. You understand? I don't know how much she did. She know how much she did, though. Huh? But if somebody to come and say, I'm just going to just set her free and she just go on and live and I'm going to take off. She doesn't know how much it cost. She doesn't know what they had to get. She doesn't know what they took upon themselves. Because he, he took upon your sins. Huh? And you took his righteousness. Huh? He was made sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. You understand? He did it for us. Notice what it said. It said, he was made and you was made. Which means it wasn't your doing. It was all God's doing. Huh? And so Paul said, God forbid that we should live any longer than he is. I'm through with sin, y'all. <laughs> Don't want to continue in it. Don't want to have nothing to do with it. I'm through with sin. Can you say that? Can you say that? I'm through with sin. You understand? Know can you say that? Can you walk around the bars and say, I'm through with the bars? Can, can you walk around the places that used to bring you down and say, I'm through with that? Can you say that? That's what Paul said. Put it in your mind. I'm through with it. I, I don't know about some of y'all. Some of y'all, before you got what you have today, 
Sometimes you are worse off than what you are today. Would you want to go back to get that again? No. He said, I'm through with that. Huh? I'm, I'm through and it's over with in my life. You see, one thing about it when, when God did this for us, He said that we should live in sin. Now, what I'm talking about, we shouldn't be practicing it. We shouldn't be going around doing it anymore. We shouldn't live in He delivered us from that. And see, the thing is this here. When He began to do that, a good key to how knowing that it's not you. Paul says us in the book of Galatians, in the second chapter, in the 18th to the 20th verse, he says this here. He says, For if I build again those things which I destroyed, he said, I make myself a transgressor. He said, Well, I through the Lord died to the Lord that I might live to God. He said, I've been crucified with Christ, and it's no longer I who live. That's the key. You think you're doing it, ain't you? It's no longer I, he said. He said, but it's Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave me. I believe Jesus can keep me, y'all. I believe Jesus can, can live this holy life through me. I believe that. I believe Jesus can take me all the way back to glory. I believe Jesus can keep me from falling. I believe Jesus can cause me to walk up. I believe Jesus can do it. Paul said, it's no more I, but it's the Christ that's in me. I'm not doing it. I can't walk this life. I can't talk. I can't do those things. But it's the one that's in me. I know he can. Say that, 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 that no sin, no God was found in him. Can you imagine somebody like that living for you? Huh? No sin, no God, nothing can be found. And he's living for you? Huh? He knows how to do it. You don't know how to do it. He knows how to stop lying. He knows how to stop doing all those things that God, he knows how to do it. And he's living it through you. Just need your arms. Just yield to me. I just need your mind. Just yield to me. I'll just give me your whole self and I'll live this life for you. And it ain't hard when you know he's doing it. Well, when I got, I got to a point where I realized that he was doing it and that he was keeping me and that he was upholding me, that the walk that I was walking wasn't my strength. And that the thoughts and things that came to my mind wasn't just because of my flesh. But he would bring it to me. And, and the will to do of his good pleasure, he worked that into me. You know, you know sometimes we get stubborn, but he got a way of working it into you. Huh? The will to want to do the things that pleases God. He'll put it into your desires. Huh? That's the good. You, you, you think it's you want to come to church on Sunday? I know you think that. You think it's you who wants to pray? You think it's you who wants to read? He's working that into you to where you desire it in your life. I pray to God that that never leaves me. Because, you know, we get, we get tired of things. We get, we get kind of fed up with things. Enough is enough. I done prayed 20 years. Enough is enough praying. <laughs> Somebody got to push you now. He's there. To push you when you won't do it for yourself. And see, and then they, how could we do it? How could we mock God's grace by doing more sin? See, we don't come to God. And then another thing it tells us about this grace of God in Titus 2, 11. It said, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly love, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this what? This present world. The grace of God that gives salvation doesn't bring with it a desire to want to sin more. It brings with it a desire to want to live a sanctified, holy life. That's what it brings with it. It doesn't bring a lot. You want to go out there and just do everything you want to do, whatever you want to do, because you know God will forgive you about it. No, it don't bring you that. It brings you a life that you want to please God. This just don't come overnight, y'all. Believe me, it don't just come overnight. But as you begin to more and more yield and more and more give your life to God, the more and more you'll be just like Him. And it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't happen overnight. Don't think you're going to be Jesus tomorrow, because you ain't. Let me just kick that thought out your mind right now. You ain't going to be him tomorrow. 
But I guarantee you this. By the time he come back, you will be just like him. Because the Bible says you're going to see him as he is. Then Paul says, we're going to read down to that fifth verse. So the third verse, he say, notice that first word, no. He said, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his what? Resurrection. Paul says, I want you to know something. He says, I want you to know that when you were baptized, he said, I want you to know that you was put in Christ. Huh? He said, in, in, in baptism, baptism is an outward show of an inward spiritual action in your life. In other words, in baptism we show that we died, we was buried, and that we rose again. Just as Jesus did. And so when he said that just like Christ died, it was buried. By faith, God looks at you as being dead and also buried. Huh? All this is done by faith. Look at what it says now. He says we are identified with Christ by being placed under water. Huh? He's proclaiming that he has died and been buried with Christ. Buried. Which means that whatever sins, whatever life, whatever things I used to do, it's buried. Huh? Whatever attitudes I used to have, it's buried. Huh? Whatever I used to be like, it's buried. Huh? And I'm going to tell you something. When it's buried, it's what? It's dead. He said, and just like Christ, when he was buried, he took all of our sins, every sin of the whole world, everybody, and he what? Took it down in the grave. Buried it. And just like Christ was buried sin, your sins also are buried. Taken down and put in the grave. And then he said, this here. He said, nowhere we were baptized into Christ and we were baptized into death. Therefore being buried with him by baptism into death, the like as Christ was raised up by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. Another thing happened to you when you believed and you took on Christ by faith. Not only were you buried, but you was raised to walk in the newness of life by the glory and the power of God. He raised Jesus from the dead. That body that went in the grave wasn't the body that came out of the grave. That person that went in came out a new person. That old pain, those, all those things that hurted him, bothered him while he was in that other body, don't bother him now. Huh? That old life has been, what? Buried. And now the new life, the new life, what? Brother, look at He was a total change. See, when you actually bury that old sinful life, that old man, when you actually bury that and then you rise to walk in the newness of life, in other words, we talking about you get a whole new life, huh? When God raises you up, when God empowers you, when God gets you from the grave and brings you back to life, now God's empowering you, God's changing you, God's giving you the life that you now live. That old life is buried. With all this sin, with all this reputation, but the new life, people say, who are you, huh? Oh, I used to be like this here, but I ain't like that no more, huh? Because God raised you up as a whole new person. I like, I like what I put down here. He gives you a new heart. <laughs> he gives you a new life. He gives you a new birth, a new heart. He makes you a new creature, huh? And then all that, you become a new man. All that old stuff is gone. You become brand new. 
Behold, all things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Huh? All because of your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You said, when you go down in that water, I'm going down as Sam. But when I come back up, I'm coming back up as a new man. You are saying that all those old habits, all those old desires, all those old lusts, all those little things I used to always run out the chase out the, and couldn't live without, all those things went down into the grave and behold all things are new huh? I got a new mind I got a new heart I got a new life I got a new body I'm a new person because why? because God brought me up caused me to walk in the newness man new newness and when I see you talking like he used to talk I say ain't that new body him He's still saying, come on, dogs. <laughs> Ain't nothing new about him. <laughs> He's still calling. He's still down with your boys like full flat ties. Ain't nothing new about you. Huh? He can't even say, how can you look you? Huh? Come on, you should have some new language. Should be praising God. Should be saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Huh? Not no more, come on, Spanky. Oh, I know it. <laughs> Got some new language. New way of walking. New way of talking. New way of acting. Huh? He brought you up to walk in the newness of life. Huh? Oh, boy, look here. Therefore, being buried with him by baptism into death, just like Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also to walk in the newness of life. Notice the other thing he said. He said, well, if we have been planted together. When did you, I thought Jesus went in that grave by himself. He said, but well, we was planted together. I was identified with him in death. When he went in the grave, I went in the grave. Bobby said, how you know? I didn't see you. I was there. Even though it happened 2,000 years ago, I was there. How did I get there? By faith. Because when I accepted him as my Lord and Savior, I died when he died. And I rose when he arose. Huh? My old life was buried, just like that old life was buried. And I rose to walk in the newness of life, just like he rose to walk in the newness of life. Notice what he said. He said, just like we're planted together in his death, we shall also be in the likeness of the what? It was resurrection. We got resurrection power in our life right now. Got something about that resurrection power. Death can't do nothing with it. Sin can't do nothing with it. He said, look, he got that resurrection power in his life. He's been brought back from the dead. The Bible says you have him quicker who are dead in trespasses and sin. Y'all know, y'all don't know how I feel. When you know you have resurrection life, you know what that is? That's everlasting life. That's life that can't cease, can't be stopped. Huh? And you got that in you. The strongest thing that death couldn't conquer was the power of God raising Jesus back up from the dead. Death held everybody else. But he couldn't hold it because that resurrection power is stronger than death. What that say? Woo, Lord, I mercy. The strongest thing a man can't deal with is death. Can't do nothing with it. Huh? The devil used to have the power. But now in Christ Jesus, the Bible says we have passed from death unto life. Y'all see, some folks walk around here and I think they're still dead. Ain't got no life in them at all. No joy, no peace. Don't even feel like they're going to heaven. The way they live their life. Look like me, or God should have just left them in the tomb. <laughs> left them in the casket. Don't even make them out. Because they don't look like they want to rejoice. They don't look like they got resurrected life in them. But when you got resurrection life in you, it's a new life. A whole new life. You begin to walk a whole new way. And you understand? And that and he's doing it because of the power of God. And then it says this here. 
And verse 6, the second thing you need to know. He said, knowing this, that what? That our old man is crucified. That henceforth, what? We should not serve <coughs> sin. For he that is dead is what? Free from sin. Woo! And I want you to understand this here. That's a once and for all thing. Don't have but one time. See, because when you dead, you dead. It only happened, the Bible says, only point of man, what? Wants to die. If you dead, you dead. Don't be half dead. Don't have a pulse. If you dead, you dead. And notice what he said. Lord, this, that our old man is what? Crucified. That the body of sin might be what? Destroyed. That henceforth we should what? Not serve sin. When we are buried with him and rose to walk in the newness of life, he said, know this also, that your own self, your own sinful self, your own nature, he said, has been crucified. You got a new nature, a divine nature, a nature that desires spiritual things, not fleshly things. You, you all lack. Uh, he said, know this here, that own self is buried, it's crucified, it's dead. And then those what he said, and that the body of not only sins, it's a sin. See, sin in our body, huh? He said the body of sin, the whole package, everything, crucified, huh? Oh, your, 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 those, those hands that used to do those little nasty things, put them fingers up in the middle at folks, it's dead, huh? <laughs> those little nasty speech that you used to use that tongue for, it's dead, huh? All that to the lie, kicking, running for some evil. It's dead. Huh? That, that, that's what he said. He said, the old man, your own self, your own nature, everything about your own sinful way, he said, it has been dead. And he said, and the reason is dead because we've been crucified with Christ. If you died with Christ, when Christ died, then you died. Huh? So now if you died and if you were dead, then I shouldn't see you walking around here. I'm going to tell you when I see you. When you start acting like your old self. When you say I'm going to lay down my Bible and I'm going to lay down my Holy Ghost and I'm going to start fighting. That's you. God didn't create no zombies. You dead. You need to know that. Paul said you are dead. When Christ died, you died. When Christ was buried, you was buried. Your whole own nature and everything about you and that sinful way has been what? Pronounced dead. Woo! Lord have mercy. That's good to know, ain't it? Because I know if I'm dead, I ain't got no business sinning. Huh? He said that henceforth, after your funeral, after your tombstone has been set, after it's been said, from this day to this day, you no longer live. After that, he said, from henceforth, you should what? Not serve sin. Now that sounds impossible, don't it? But he answered in the seventh verse. He said, because he that is what? Dead. That's the best illustration in the world. He that is dead. I'm going to tell y'all something. When I'm dead, J.C. Penny can call me all they want. When I'm dead, huh? All the folks I owe, all the folks that made promises to me, they come to me all they want. When I'm dead, I can't hear you. I can't, I, I, I can't even feel you no more. Huh? Everything. I'm freed. I'm free from what I owe you. I'm free from what I told you. I'm free from what I promised you. I'm, I'm free. Because why? I, I say, I say, J.C. Penny, I know I was supposed to pay you on the 5th of the month, but I ain't. I can call that long man and tell him, say, man, look here. 
your whatever I owe you whenever. Believe me, you won't ever get it from me. Because I'm dead. And because I'm dead, I don't owe nothing to the living. Understand what I'm saying? You don't owe nothing to the living. And Christ said, now that you are dead to sin, guess what? I don't owe sin nothing. I'm not bound to him. I'm not obligated to him. I don't owe him nothing because I'm dead. Oh, Lord, have mercy. See, you say you ought to know that. You ought to know. You ought to know. You say, how, how am I going to get free from sin? Because you did. That frees you from all. Okay, what you said when you were living. When you dead, it's all. Some people say, who going to get your money? I don't care. Who going to get your car? I don't care. Who going to get your house? Believe me, tell them these are the keys. <laughs> Cause why? I am dead. And you see when you get that locked up in your head, locked up in your soul, when sin comes along, you can walk right by. Cause why? I'm dead. It don't excite me. It doesn't drown me anymore. It doesn't have any control over me. It doesn't rain over me anymore. I'm and I know you really do when you can lay down and watch women's naked walk around you and you don't have no reaction. But somebody say he's dead showed up. That's how they knew. That's in the Bible. That's how they knew David was dead. They threw a young damsel in the bed with him. And the Bible said he didn't react. And because he didn't react, they say the king is dead. You see, when the devil can throw things at you and you don't react, the devil can say, oh, he dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. He can throw that liquor at you and you don't react. He said, oh, he dead. He can throw that woman at you and you don't react. Oh, he dead. He can throw that man at you and you don't react. He can say, oh, he dead. And until you realize that you dead, you don't still think that you are bound by drugs, bound by alcohol, bound by the flesh, bound by the things of this world, because why? You don't realize you are dead. What oh, about them girls hollering at me and somebody, oh, you're so handsome, oh, you're so this. I'm dead. The boy come by heaven. Did you hear them ladies? They, they making all kinds of remarks at you? I said, what did they say? <laughs> you didn't hear <laughs> And the first thing they tell you, what they say? That boy must be dead. <laughs> Something must be wrong with that boy. Because why? You have no life towards that. When you know it's not a part of your life, when it's not in your environment, when it has nothing to do with you, why should it bother you? Things that I have nothing to do with me don't bother me. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, you want to jump off that bridge and kill yourself. Who will keep walking? I ain't ready to jump off no bridge. I ain't ready to kill myself. So it don't bother me. Huh? <laughs> Come on now. What bothers you is what affects you. The devil ain't gonna tip you with something that you don't like. You do you ever think the devil will try to get you to go to bed with a hog and you don't like pigs? No. He ain't gonna bring you no hog. He gonna bring you uh what do you call him a hawk? Something so beautiful that would cause you to lose your mind. He gonna bring those kind of things. But he will not bring you something that you are not interested in. There are certain things just right now that can't even tempt you. There are certain foods that don't even affect you. They can put it into you plate by plate and you won't bother you. Because why? If you don't like that kind of food, it will not cause your taste bud to rise up or want it. Because why? It's something that you don't want. It's something that you don't reject it. And if you don't reject it, sin, and when sin comes to you, you should feel that same way. It's not something that I want. 
Paul said you need to know that you what? You dead and that what? That you are freed from any obligations, any responsibility towards what? Sin. Then we're going to close it out. Now if we be dead with Christ, he said we believe that we shall what? Also live with him. Paul said the third thing you need to know is this. That Christ being raised from the dead dies what? No more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died of the sin how many times? Once. But in that he liveth, he liveth no. God. Once you've died to sin, you should be through with sin. And once you start giving yourself unto God, it should be forever. Paul says this here, I want you to know. Christ ain't got to worry about dying anymore. Huh? You don't have to worry about that. Because death has no more dominion over him. And because death has no more dominion over him, he is free from death. Now that he's alive, now that he's been resurrected from the dead, he now lives forever unto God. Christ died under sin once, but now he lives in the presence of God forever. Now that Christ lives in unbroken and devotion of service unto God, the devil can't do nothing with him. Sin can't do nothing with him. Death can't do nothing with him. Now I want you to know what he wants you to know. He wants you to know that happened to you. You are through with death. Death has no more dominion over you. Because once you died, you died of the sin once. You ain't going to do this thing over again. It's only a one time experience. It's a one chance. One time. Huh? He said then that you died unto sin once. Death has no more dominion on you. In that you live, you live now where? With God. Not only now, but you live with God forever. And he said that you can have that assurance because why? Because Christ has conquered the grave. If you believe that Christ conquered the grave, you also conquered the grave. If you believe that death has no more dominion over Christ, death has no more dominion over you. If you believe that Christ lived forever with God, then you also what? Going to live forever with God. You can say that with assurance because of who? Because of Christ. And God said now that you are what? In Christ. Look at this here. I'm already walking the streets of gold. Somebody said, walking on carpet. I'm walking the streets of gold. I'm already got life eternal. Somebody said, but the dad, I know. I'm living forever. Now and forever, I live unto God. Now and forever, death has no dominion over me. Now and forever, I have life eternal. Because why? Because of what Jesus did for me on the cross. All these things were made possible. And Paul said you need to know. If you know right now, assured in your heart, that you are in heaven right now. That you are to live forever right now. That death has no more dominion over you right now. That sin shall not reign over you right now. If you know that right now, what kind of life would you live? Your whole life would change drastically. Because you know sin cannot dominate me. Because you know I'm dead to sin. Because you know you've been rose again to walk in the what? In the newness of life. You know these things that you have life eternal right now. In the life that I live, I don't live it, but Christ lives in me. Paul said these things believers ought to know. We shouldn't have a struggle with sin. We shouldn't have a struggle with the devil. Because if you know these things, you will know that all power that's given unto heaven and earth is given unto Jesus. 
And Jesus said, because I live, you shall live also. Jesus is our key to the kingdom. He's the center of everything in our Christian life. And the thing about it, if you know, see I told somebody just like this, and this thing that would get everybody. If you know that Jesus is with you everywhere, everywhere you go, if you know that Jesus is with you, everywhere and everything that you do and every thought that you think, if you know that Jesus is right there, what kind of life would you live? I guarantee you, you wouldn't be trying to be sneaky, <laughs> trying to be doing all those little underhand little things. You'll be honest. You'd be just like a policeman around a criminal. <laughs> when the police stand by a crook, he's an honest man. <laughs> so as the police car go around the corner, it's just like us on the, on the highway. We're doing 80, 90, 100. Uh, then we see the car die. <laughs> I know it and you do it because why all of a sudden you're in the presence of somebody huh, that you know you better give him some respect and you stop you take your foot off that gas pedal and you see a red light for miles back and the police man say and when you go by and you go by at 60 miles an hour woo a law abiding citizen but only because you are in the presence of that person if you keep that in your mind that I'm in the presence of God in everything I do everywhere I go if you keep that in your mind just like you put your foot on the brakes when you saw that police officer you will put your body in check because you know what? The Lord is right there with me. Yeah, there's a lot of things I would have said or did if I didn't know the Lord was there. But because I know he's there, it puts me in total check. Just like the highway patrolman. I'm just that way with God. Eh, I'm going to say it, but I saw. <laughs> I even sometimes, I've I, I been in... I, and uh, y'all pray for pastor because sometimes he break the speed limit. <laughs> but sometimes I thought I ran 80 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone. I go by that police officer and I say, we buddies. Because <laughs> why? I'm in his presence. When you're in God's presence and you got that on your mind all the time, you keep yourself in check. Sin won't have no dominion over you. So we thank God. Let us stand. Does anyone desire prayer at this time? If not, let's all lift our hands. Huh? Oh, oh, hard, sir. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there you go through that. I know. All right. Good. We got Carolyn on the altar here. When the Lord to totally restore her.